In this video, we'll give you an overview of how we created a prototype of an exploding arrow mechanic with destructible buildings and a third person character controller. Welcome to the prototype series, a group of videos in which we'll explore creating small projects combining different Unity features. If you're interested to dive deeper and learn more, we have a longer training session in our Unity Learn website. You can find a link to it and this downloadable project in the video description. In this video, we'll walk through the creation process of this prototype by talking about how we upgraded the character controller, how we set up the cinema machine to improve aiming, the new bomb arrow projectile, the destructible towers and fade out effect for destroyed objects, and how we enhance the project's visuals. Let's get into it. The bomb arrow is one of those special weapons that can be found in numerous types of video games. To implement it, we first needed a character who could move, aim, and shoot. Since we wanted to focus mainly on prototyping the bomb arrow mechanic, we used a project from our previous video where we explained how to set up a third-person camera using the Cinemachine package. You can find the link for that video in the description below. The project included some 3D assets, a terrain with textures, a character able to move, aim, and shoot, and a Cinemachine camera. Using environmental assets, we designed the scene putting the character at the center of the fenced area. Inside the area, we place the buildings that the character will interact with using the exploding arrow, and outside the fence, we place some non-interactable background elements. The Cinemachine package offers some great tools to set up a third-person camera. In fact, the package comes with many camera setups ready to be used, covering many common use cases. The third-person perspective for when the character is moving is achieved in the project by setting a few properties of a Cinemachine virtual camera. The follow property indicates which target the camera has to follow. The body section set to third-person follow gives the possibility to specify a custom positional offset that the camera keeps from the target. In play mode, we can see that thanks to these settings, the movement camera can move following the target and rotate around it, always keeping the offset specified in the body section. A key feature of the Cinemachine package is the ability to handle transitions between different cameras automatically. If we deactivate one virtual camera and activate another, we trigger a transition between the two camera positions. We added a second virtual camera to the scene with a different offset in the body section and disabled by default. When we press the aim button, we activate the aim virtual camera and deactivate the movement virtual camera, creating a smooth transition between them. This new perspective makes it easier to see and hit the desired target. When we release the aim button, we reactivate the movement virtual camera. Cinemachine allows us to add some important visual feedback to the camera by shaking it at key moments. The shake effect is a built-in feature provided with the package. The extension is named Cinemachine Impulse Listener and allows the camera to shake when a specified event happens. We trigger a shake event when we shoot an arrow or when a bomb arrow explodes. This adds impact and power to these two moments and makes the prototype feel more dynamic. With the camera ready, we started to upgrade the character controller. We focused on two main points, adding more animations to cover all the movement directions and implementing foot placement. Before talking about these features, it's worth mentioning that we use the input system package to receive inputs and control the character. Once installed, this package overrides the default input system. By creating an asset called input action asset, it is possible to bind actions defined by a name like the move action to different kinds of input, like the keyboard or our joystick. Initially, the archer used a single running animation for each direction. This was very noticeable, especially for lateral movements. To improve this, we added three new animations, one for each direction, and we upgraded the existing animator controller. In this case, we needed to blend between two or more similar motions. We removed the single animation state and we replaced it with a blend tree. In the blend tree, you can add multiple animations and thanks to blending parameters, blend smoothly by incorporating parts of each to varying degrees. 
In our case, the blending parameters are the X and Y movement input values, and we can pass them to the animator from a C -sharp script. With our character ready, we start to develop this special weapon. The idea was to implement a new arrow capable of exploding after a while and destroying the towers in the scene. As soon as the bomb hits a collider, its rigid body becomes kinematic. Then a countdown begins, and while the time runs, the arrow spheres materials blink randomly. This effect gives feedback that something is about to happen. When the countdown ends, the bomb explodes, applying a force to all rigid bodies found in a defined radius around it. We also created a cartoon looking particle system to enhance the explosive effect visually. To break the tower into pieces, we use three game objects, a parent and two children. The first child has a single mesh representing the whole tower. The second one is disabled by default and has many child objects. Each child corresponds to a single mesh, which is a piece of the broken tower. The idea is to swap these two game objects when the explosion occurs. When the bomb hits a target, we look for a destructible component. And if the component is found, we deactivate the whole tower and activate the broken tower after the bomb's countdown. The change happens in the same frame of the explosion, but before applying the forces to all rigid bodies found in the radius of the blast. Destroying a tower sprinkles a lot of pieces of it on the ground. To avoid having them accumulate in the scene, we implemented a vanishing shader using Shadergraph. After a few seconds of the pieces sitting on the ground, they start disappearing. As the last step, we wanted to add polish and enhance the visual look of the project. To make the explosion particles stand out, we decided to switch the scene to a night lighting setup with a pale moonlight. Using the bloom post processing effect, this new lighting makes the explosion shine and pop out from the environment visually. And as a final touch, we enabled fog in the lighting settings. If you want to download and try out this prototype yourself, you can find it via the link in the description below. There is also a link to the Unity Learn website where you can find a longer training session showcasing the features used to build this prototype. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.